I was diagnosed with CMT when I was about 13. I had always had trouble in school, running, tripping, falling down. Um, I remember trying out for the volleyball team and I laugh at that now because I couldn't even jump a foot off the ground and they were looking for you to jump five or six feet off the ground. But I just wasn't aware of what it was. My parents weren't aware of what it was. They just thought I was clumsy. So um, when I was about 13, my mom broke her ankle and ended up uh, going in for some tests and through a series of good luck, I guess, she was diagnosed with CMT. So at that point, they recommended that her kids be tested. So we had the um, nerve conduction studies and were diagnosed with CMT at 13. And at that point, the book was closed. We didn't talk about CMT in my family. We didn't acknowledge that we had it. Um, we knew that we were different. We knew that we were going to have some challenges, but we knew there was no treatment and no cure. And so we didn't, uh, we didn't talk about it. I started really getting into physical training with a, a personal trainer. And uh, I actually participated in the Danskin Triathlon. And I think probably was trying to just exercise my way right out of the disease. So when I finally started to acknowledge that the CMT was getting the best of me, I decided to do some research and take things into my own hands. And I contacted Allison. And she recommended that I do a letter writing campaign uh, and reach out to my friends and family, let them know about the challenges that I was having, and ask them for their help and support in finding a cure. And that was kind of the beginning of my acknowledging and dealing with the fact that I have CMT. The hard part was, um, and I, I've become really good at it, making excuses for not being able to do certain activities. So I spent a lot of time saying, oh, I have a stomach ache, I can't play in recess, or um, getting an excuse to get out of the presidential physical fitness test. Um, and it's worked its way into my adulthood. Um, I didn't go to a wedding a year ago because it was on a, in a grass lawn, and I, my husband wouldn't be there, and I knew I wouldn't have an arm to hold on to. So um, yeah, it's been hard, and it feels good to finally be acknowledging it and to reach out and to get the support of my friends and family and to, uh, to hopefully find a, a cure. Well, since reaching out to HNF and starting my letter writing campaign, it really opened up a world of deep friendship relationships that I really don't know I would have attained had I not really opened myself up. But in addition to that, um, Allison is does a remarkable job of making you feel part of the organization. Um, so I, in the past, have contributed recipes for the newsletter that she put out. Um, she asked me to come here today to be part of this project. And all of that helps in the process of dealing with CMT. I think what I would say to people that are out there suffering with CMT is that you're not alone and that the best thing you can do is uh, get on social media, um, contact Allison at the Hereditary Neuropathy Foundation, do your research, get involved, um, be your own advocate. A lot of doctors don't know anything about CMT, and it's important to get accurate, concise, and clear information and be able to be your own advocate. Um, but don't suffer through it alone, uh, because the more people that are aware, the more funding we'll raise for research, and the more likely we will be to find a cure.